Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to this learning experience brought to you by AWS, Sneak, and Pomelo. My name is Cody, and welcome back to Tech Strong Learning. We've got an exciting presentation ahead, but before we get that ball rolling, I do have just a couple of housekeeping notes I'd like to review. First of all, today's session isn't being recorded. So if you miss any of our discussion, if you'd like to watch at a later point in time, or if you'd like to share with your team, you will be receiving an email with a link to access the recording on demand. If you'd like to engage with us, there are a couple of options for you to do so. The first option is the chat tab. So if you see that chat tab on the right, I'd like you to go ahead and let us know from where in the world you are joining us from. I'm seeing we've got somebody from Virginia and a couple other hellos. So thanks for chiming in everyone. Um, if you do have any questions, we, we won't be having a formal Q&A period during our program today, but we do want you to send your questions into the Q&A and we're going to send those over to the folks at AWS, Sneak and Pomelo after the fact, and they can respond to you uh, via email. Uh, if you jump over to that handout section, you'll see there is a copy of our presentation slides. So feel free to download those. You'll also find a link to set up your free Sneak account. So do not miss out on that. Of course, before we close things out today, we are giving away four $25 Amazon gift cards. So be sure to stick around to make sure you're one of our lucky winners. And our conversation today revolves around how Pomelo implemented developer first code security controls across their SDLC. And joining me today is David Lugo, Principal Partner Marketing Manager at Sneak. We have Leandro Sanguinetto, Lead Engineer for Platform and AppSec at Pomelo. And Nicolas Gomez, Senior Application Security Engineer at Pomelo. So David, Leandro, and Nicholas, thank you all so much for joining me today. David, do you wanna get this conversation started? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Cody. And thank you for everybody for joining us today. My name is David Lugo. Uh, as Cody said, I'm a principal partner marketing manager here at Sneak, working very closely with our friends at AWS. And I'm joined for a very exciting discussion by Leandro Sanguinetto. Leandro, do you wanna tell us a little bit about what you do at Pomelo, your role as lead engineer for platform and application security? Okay, okay. Hi everyone, how are you? Um, as a lead engineer in Pomelo, um, and my responsibilities are to ensure that all the vulnerabilities that we find uh, across our services and our infrastructure uh, are all uh, fixed and at for the platform engineering part, we do develop um, services and features for our for our for our infrastructure and, and the other teams uh, that, that are involved in the uh, the product development. So nice to meet you all, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thanks, Leandro. We're also joined by Nicolas Gomez who's a senior application security engineer at Pomelo. Nicolas, you want to introduce yourself and a little bit about what you do at Pomelo? Yeah, 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 thanks, David. Um, first of all, hi, everyone, and thank you all for coming here today. Uh, yeah, yes, as Leon mentioned, we are part of the platform solutions team. Um, my case, I'm working with all the things related to applicative security and things related to security in general. Uh, for instance, I was working with all the team on the pen test over the applications, implementing security over the development pipeline, uh, imparting trainings to the engineering teams, uh, among others. And well, I was part of the team that implemented Sneak here in, in Pomelo. Excellent. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the agenda for today. Today, we're going to be talking first about Pomelo and its key customer use cases, what Pomelo does to provide these new solutions to their customers today. We'll talk about how Pomelo built an efficient development workflow. And then after that, how it is that they implemented Sneak into that software development lifecycle to keep those efficiencies across security as well. Then we'll talk about the value that Pomelo has received from implementing Sneak across that software development lifecycle in the development workflow. And we'll finish off by talking a little bit more about Sneak and how it is that you can get started today for free take advantage of that solution so you can get a little bit of hands-on experience with finding and fixing vulnerabilities in development. So first, let's talk about the most interesting thing. Pomelo is a company. So Pomelo is known 
for its innovative approach to building Latin America's first regional fintech infrastructure platform. By enabling companies to launch digital accounts and issue various cards, including prepaid debit, credit, crypto, and corporate cards, Bomelo is providing an essential service that meets modern use cases of companies across various industries. Their cloud-based platform was designed to remove the largest pain points in the industry while allowing for more modern use cases and meeting the technical requirements of both technology companies and larger enterprises that are operating in more traditional industries. And these include banking and retail, energy, real estate, agriculture, and several others. As a result, companies can now launch and scale financial services within weeks, dramatically improving go-to-market strategy, saving years of work, thousands of people, and in many cases, millions of dollars. Within just 18 months, they've managed to raise over $60 million of investment from top tier global funds, including index vendors, and index vendors, Monashis, Tiger Global, Inside QED, Sequoia, Section 32, and Box Group, as well as the founders of Block and Checkout, Marketa, Affirm, Twitter, Plaid, N26, Kavok, Auth0, and several others. Pomelo has operations in six markets, which include Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and Chile, with over 310 employees and more than 100 regional customers including eight unicorns. Now, from a technological point of view, Bomelo has an uptime of over 99%, 99.9%, and performs load tests and chaos engineering in all its production services, reaching over 380 TPS. They've also designed a 100% cloud-native architecture, which allows scaling to be more efficient when developing new products or functionalities. Bomelo is also PCI certified and has developed over 120 APIs in over six thousand containers. So by offering a unique value proposition, Bomelo is disrupting the industry and helping companies across Latin America to modernize their financial services. And this disruption and innovation are what make Bomelo a strong contender in the market today. If you have any more questions about Bomelo, please do feel free to check out their services at their website, bomelo.ai. So let's jump into the discussion itself. I want to pass it over to you, Leandro, and ask you, what are some of Pomelo's key customer use cases today? Can you talk to us about those? Of course, of course. Thank you, David. Well, uh, at Pomelo, we have a lot of uh, possible use cases, uh, such as credit cards, neobank uh, wallet, uh, or corporate cards for expenses. Uh, however, there are three particular use cases that I would like to, to mention, and those are uh, collateralized credit card, instant funding, and crypto. Regarding crypto path, uh, Pomelo enables the clients, uh, the client users, to make purchases with a card associated with fiat and crypto funds at any online or physical stores. Also, Pomelo is able to offer other possible possibilities like uh, transaction authorizations, chargebacks, and benefits, for example, such as cashbacks and loyalty rewards, depending on the specific client business rules, okay? Uh, regarding the instant funding, uh, this is a prepaid or credit card that is used to receive real-time uh, authorizations for each transaction to be made. And the purchases limits and the specifications are defined according to the client's business rules and in compliance with local regulations. That this is something that uh, changes uh, from every country that we work. So finally, um, the other use case is the collateralized <laughs> credit card, sorry, <laughs> use case that points to a card associated with physical assets, uh, for example, uh, grains, buildings, uh, etc., or digital assets like shares, token, um, and all and all that stuff. Uh, that serves as a guarantee for the credit available on the card 
And the rules for granting credit are uh, execute, executing collateral and managing collections are customized to the client uh, based on the on this on his business model. So that are the the, the three uh, use cases that we wanted to mention today. And I hope you get interested on it. So. And like I said, you can find more information about each of these use cases at Bomelo.ai. I can definitely see how you're disrupting the financial services industry in Latin America. It's really exciting stuff. Now, I understand yeah. both of you are part of the platform solutions group at Bomelo. So I, I do want to talk about how it is that you built these services, how you created an efficient development pipeline to keep up with the many, many customers that you have today and how you're applying, how you were applying security controls in the past to that workflow. Nicolas, I'll, I'll actually ask you this one. Can you talk yeah, to us yeah. a little bit about that development pipeline you all created? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, David, the first thing I would like to remark is that the security is very important to Pomelo. Uh, mind that the cybersecurity team was one of the, of the first teams that was created uh, just at the same time that other transactional teams like, uh, I don't know, I mean, teams that generate products and services for clients. So this is my experience. My experience is not a common situation for all startups, but in this case, it allows us to focus on the work we need to do to improve the security info model. So regarding the platform solutions team and applicative security controls into the problem, in particular, uh, we work in a secure software development life cycle, that is SSDLC for short, uh, that allows Pomelo and us to elevate the security level to the best possible place until that moment, I mean, uh, previous to sneak. <laughs> so this SSDLC schema uh, was created together with other infrastructure and security teams uh, and have typical controls that we can imagine. Uh, for example, a static code analysis and software composition analysis, uh, secret detection scans, AAC scans, uh, base image scans, among others. Uh, well, uh, to implement this, uh, we leverage of two particular components that we use in Pomelo. The first one is GitHub as our code platform. Uh, the other one is CircleCI, uh, as the CI CD tool that we use here. Uh, in particular, since CircleCI is integrated with GitHub in, in each development stage, it allows all the security and infrastructure teams to generate, you know, the, these controls and execute them wherever they want. So CI in particular uh, has multiple opportunities or multiple possibilities to automate actions in a pipeline. Uh, we use an orb uh, that, uh, to give more context. An orb uh, is a portion of code written in bash that allows the client or you to execute uh, some commands like a typical script. Uh, for example, I don't know, uh, download files or execute a bash command, uh, a Docker image, and so on. Uh, it works like GitHub Actions or, or GitLab CI, uh, for example. Um, this orb that we created was called the security orb, and it is not limited only to applicative controls. For example, as I mentioned, uh, there is the AAC scan that used like, uh, tools like Hadolin, for example. Uh, another thing I would like to highlight is that the orb is formed with most of the open source tools like uh, Gaussek, Bandit, Gitlik, etc. So as a conclusion, yes, uh, the way in which we implement security at Pomelo before Sneak was with this orb that runs in all the repositories and uh, that is formed by open source tools. Uh, that is all. Interesting. That's very resourceful. And I could see how you developed an efficient pipeline using solutions like CircleCI's orbs. I know that several other companies that we work with have orbs as well, and they've found it very, very valuable in their development environments. However, as far as security itself, how is it that you integrated security? And Leandro, I'll ask you this. I know that you had security integrated into that pipeline in the past, but what were some of the challenges that you faced with the traditional security tools that you were using in terms of the modern development workflow you had? Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, there were many challenges. Uh, first of all, since Pomelo is strongly regulated, uh, we needed a tool that let us generate uh, audit evidence uh, 
easily and fast. So some of these some of the evidence is regarding to the SDLC, the software development life cycle, and the controls that you implement on that pipe on that pipeline. Okay. So here, here it was our first, our first big trouble, uh, and it was when your security uh, software development lifecycle controls were create, uh, are created with open source tools like uh, Nicolas mentioned, uh, the visibility parsing and or audit for the outputs and data, it's more complex. That's because uh, when you work with this kind of solutions or tools, um, always, not always, but uh, in, most, in most cases, um, they work with a specific languages or you can do everything just with one and you have multiple formats for the information that you receive. For example, uh, are some that gives you the, the JSON outputs or SARI for YAML, and you need to put all of that in place and almost, uh, standardize all the data, make some data aggregation to that to understand the, the findings and how you can um, ensure that our real and are not false positives. So uh, that was our uh, big trouble, uh, the first that we uh, encountered. So um, also with that are the uh, data structures that you receive from all these outputs. Uh, some are different than others. Others have some uh, nested labels and other uh, naming conventions and other stuff. So, um, also, um, the, grow the growing number of the repositories that we, we have uh, and we have uh, make us more difficult to, to reach the, the state that we want for our vulnerability management pipeline or life cycle or how you want to name it. So in this way, the data was uh, increasingly unmanageable. So uh, the lack of visibility for the teams and also the scalability of the controls were a problem too because all, all of these that I mentioned, uh, regard, regarding scalability, we should keep in mind that Pomelo services are created uh, using multiple languages. Um, now we are working mo uh, mostly with Golang, uh, Kotlin, and Node uh, for our microservices and all, all the services that we provide. So making something from open source uh, tools that can analyze all, all, the, all, of, all of our code and services and repositories for all, all of those um, programming languages was really uh, difficult. So uh, furthermore, another thing we should take into account is that some of all open source tools uh, are not too confident, uh, or actually there is no open source tool for some languages, for example, for Java, and you need to do some some things uh, to make it work. So the combo of that, the lacking of visibility and scalability, um, some false positive that these tools reported, and the data that was unmanageable, uh, were the main problems that we that made us to search for a tool like Sneak. Uh, from that we have started this uh, relationship with you guys. <laughs> Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about how we started the relationship, what you saw in Sneak that was valuable in the first place, and how it fit neatly into your technology stack. Because as I understand it, if you have these open source tools that sometimes don't scan well across languages like Java, if you're trying to stitch together a bunch of traditional security tools and then aggregate all that data onto one dashboard, it's always difficult to do. But what is it that you saw in Sneak that was valuable to your team? 
Maybe Nicolas, I'll, I'll let you answer this one. Yeah, uh, well, um, to be honest, when we start to, to search for a security tool, uh, we keep in mind all the problems uh, that Leah mentioned previously. Uh, you know, the lack of visibility, scalability, uh, the large number of false positive, and etc. cetera. Uh, and also added one more thing, that is uh, we understood that as much as we get the best security tool in the world, if we were not able to give the visibility and achieve to involve the engineering teams directly, uh, the implementation was going to fail or it was not as expected. Uh, so there were two possibilities. Uh, the first one was to, to implement a classic vulnerability management process for all the findings, uh, you know, uh, create a case, perform the follow up, contact the team and so on, or uh, try something different. So regarding the first, the first possibility, uh, we can quickly come to the conclusion that a classic vulnerability management methodology was going to leave us with one of the previous problems that, that we mentioned, that is the, the lack of scalability. For example, uh, the CA, the software composition analysis tools, uh, professional tools, usually reports a large number of uh, vulnerabilities that will be difficult to manage if we want to generate a case for each finding, contact the team, perform the follow-up, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So it will affect the, the agility that we want. So to understand this, think that Pomelo has more than 900 repositories. Uh, this is a constantly growing number. Uh, multiple, uh, yeah. <laughs> multiple hardened images, AAC repositories, and much more, product services, I know. Uh, so a traditional variety marshal workflow would not scale for the SDLC issues or detection that we want. So having this record, disregarding the classic uh, flow, we had to think in something different uh, for Pomelo. So we started to work in a process that allow us to give the visibility and involve the engineering teams we want uh, so after researching implementation and discussing it uh, internally, I think uh, we hit the nail on the head. So we start to work on a process in which all the teams should be part of the SSDLC and they can have autonomy and the power to fix the findings like outdated libraries or code fixes. So as a bottom line, we wanted a platform that in addition to covering all our security standards and all uh, fix all the problems uh, like the lack of scalability can be easily operated by the developer. So, I mean, the, the tool we select should have the possibility of, of being part of the SDLC uh, in a developer lead way. Um, so keeping the aforementioned option in mind, uh, we started testing some solutions, including the SNIC platform. Uh, so as an abstract, we, uh, when I access the, the SNIC page, it was easy for me to detect that I could generate my POC alone. Uh, so taking this into account, I did onboarding. So prior to, to contact sales, uh, we already had the account generated. So then, obviously, uh, we spoke with them, and they assigned a great team for the PUC that were Claudia, Caroline, and Wendy, who helped us with uh, many things like configuration, configuration such as uh, the platform, clear doubts, uh, et cetera, uh, license things, et cetera. Um, but in terms, in terms of time, uh, I think that in about one week, we have our account generated. And we started the configuration and the testing of the platform using real repositories uh, or repositories. So taking about the SNIC platform and the PUC, uh, there are three or four things related to the SNIC that, uh, platform that uh, like us, that are uh, the easy usability and the easy IDE plugin installation. Sorry. Um, in order to install the, the, the ID plugin, you only need to, to search the plugin uh, in your in your ID. For example, if you are using Visual Studio Code, you only need to access the, the, the application and search for the SNIC plugin, then install it. And the, the, the plugin will start to scan your code and your libraries as the, as the platform, as the cloud platform. Um, also, the, 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 the low numbers of pulse positive, that is very important for us, and the integrations uh, that the platform have, in particular, the ones with Shira, Slack, and, and GitHub. 
Uh, so having clear uh, that after the PUC, SNIC was the tool we need, uh, we defined the success criteria for us that were that all the repositories should be covered by SNIC, all the teams should have access to the platform and the IDE with the roles we want, and all the teams should know how to use SNIC and must know the rule games and how to do some actions like create PRs or uh, fix a fan in something like that. So um, taking these goals into account uh, and supported by the SNIC team, uh, we achieved to reach the first two goals in two weeks. Uh, I mean, all the repositories covered by SNIC uh, and all the, the access created. Right? All um, <laughs> Yeah, short time. Um, regarding this graph, uh, once SNIC was implemented, the SSDLC architecture was something like the, the graph is showing. Uh, at the top left corner, you can see that developer uh, who is using the Sneak IDE plugin commit changes to the repository. That changes uh, are generating a PR uh, that are that is analyzed for the Sneak modules, open source and code, dependable, and the security orb that is still working with other checks that uh, we don't cover uh, with the Nix. Uh, and all the detections are reported to Slack or Slack by email and to Rocket, that is a, our platform solution or platform application, sorry. Um, also, there is something that is not shown by this graph, uh, by this graph, that is all the repositories I bang, uh, are being scanned daily or weekly by SNCC, depending on the configuration of the repository. Uh, and also that information is notified uh, via Rocket or, or Slack and Jira if needed. And um, finally, as an important thing, uh, SNCC allow us to detect improvement opportunities in some security processes that we have. For example, uh, improvements with in possible improvements in the vulnerability management workflow we have uh, for the findings from pandas or, or, or the way in which we manage some base image. So, that is all. Finally, uh, keep in mind that uh, Sneak is still a new platform for us, so some integrations are, are still being created. So I think that that is all. That's incredible, and thank you for sharing all that. It's really nice to hear that you had clear goals in mind. You understood what kind of a platform you needed. You needed a platform that gave you easy usability that fit neatly into your existing technology stack, fit neatly into the ID, and had those plugins so that you could meet those goals of making sure all of your repositories are covered by a modern security tool, that all teams have access to that same platform, including in the IDE for the roles that you're looking for, specifically developers, and that all the teams should know how to use these modern security tools and know that the, the rules of that game. That's really great and really great to hear that within two weeks you were able to implement that. So that actually gets me to my next question. What type of value, now that you've implemented the solution, have your security and development teams seen from implementing Sneak into your workflows? Maybe Leandro, I'd hand this one over to you. Yes, yes. Thank you, David. Well, um, regarding, keep, keep in mind that uh, we implemented uh, Sneak two months ago. So uh, these numbers are be, uh, growing up uh, with the time. So. Regarding the SCA uh, or the Docker file detections, uh, they tend to always exist, even in, when you fix uh, some vulnerabilities. There is an open source library with any kind of issue, but regarding these numbers, uh, we uh, since we implement uh, SNCC, uh, we have uh, 9,500 issues resolved and counting. And we have uh, 2,150 hikes and 200 criticals and 100 with major exploits, uh, commonly part of the DocuFi images. This is for you to picture in your mind that uh, the things that you can find or detect with this platform uh, implemented in your pipeline. So uh, these uh, are based on uh, 900 repositories scan, uh, 
and 200 developers using a SNEED uh, with the ID and also when they commit uh, or merge a new, a new pull request in the repositories, uh, that's where also a SNEED runs and analyze again uh, the code. So we receive a high compromise from the management and the teams uh, inside Pomelo to reduce the number of findings to a minimal, minimal expression. Furthermore, inclusion of SNEEK helped us to detect uh, other processes that we should improve and to start to work with uh, other teams to engage this situation. Um, that is not a bad situation, but we uh, have a goal that is um, it's really ambitious. So we, we want a vulnerability zero. <laughs> uh, that's a policy that uh, it's something really hard that, but we, something that we want to achieve and or be really near from that zero. Uh, so uh, regarding uh, the implementation, okay. Um, going out from the numbers and all the stuff and things that we want and our dreams. <laughs> uh, we want, uh, the implementation give us more visibility, okay? Um, the integrations with Slack, Shira, um, also the API that the, this, this solution provides help us uh, to make all these, all these these things that you can detect on your pipeline um, more uh, visible for everyone uh, from the developers to the managers to the C-level. Uh, and also that give the, the, the development teams uh, more independence to enter a sneak, see the things that they have to to war with the things that they have to fix and uh, work on their own uh, to to resolve all these all these issues that the platform reports. That is something uh, that with the all vulnerability management workflows, uh, you needed to go and report, needed to go and ping the teams and see okay. Uh, is this resolved? Did you resolve it? Uh, how how do you think? When do you think that this will be done? And, and other stuff with Sneak, uh, they can uh, do it more by themselves, and you all only need to enter and see how is the 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 progression from every for every team, or or if also if you want to see it for. Uh, Issues that are only critical or high, you can do it also. So that's uh, that's something really nice. And also the other things, the other thing uh, is that uh, it's really scalable um, because you only need to integrate the repositories, and make your configuration uh, via GitHub, or if you want, you can use a uh, uh, CIR too or and there are many ways to integrate with your, your own um, repository management uh, tool that you want to use. So that's, that's really nice. And the, the most important thing for us, uh, it was that you can manage your, your data from the findings in one place. Uh, you want to scan something in Golan, you can do it. You want to scan something in Java, you can do it. You need to scan something on Python, you can also do it. And you can call the same API to retrieve all that information in one place, in one call. And that, that was really nice and was the painful thing that we were fighting with uh, before Sneak. So uh, that's something to, to mention. So great work with that. And to wrap up, uh, the feedback was positive uh, from all the teams that were using the ID in Pomelo. 
um, since it's comfortable and the detections are in early stage and there's suggestions uh, for the uh, for fixing things are, are uh, really accurate so uh, as a positive things to mention and to finish uh, it's CC uh, sneak it CC and add uh, a lot of uh, value to your uh, secure software that the development life cycle. Uh, it's easy to manage, it's easy to manage users, it's easy to manage repositories, and they have good examples in their documentation that that's something really important because you don't find uh, good documentation everywhere. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, for experience, uh, you don't find that uh, everywhere. And the thing I, I want to, to also remark is, uh, that I mentioned before, is the integrations. Uh, Taking into account that since we connected Sneak uh, with Sneak, uh, to finish the first step of implementation, um, that, that takes in, in a, into account uh, in the, uh, perform integration, configuration, users, invitations, uh, first tier of, of repositories included, and so on. Uh, we spent two weeks. Two weeks. Incredible. Across hundreds yeah. of employees. Yes. Yes. So uh, it's, that's what, that was our experience uh, with, with Nick. And that that's how we implemented uh, at Pomelo. Um, I hope that this helps someone that, he, that is looking for something like we needed in that moment uh, to uh, take the decision to prove a sneak, make a POC, and get the get your pipeline uh, easy and secure. So thank you guys for inviting us today. Absolutely, and thank you, Leandro. Not only do we appreciate it, but I feel like your security and development teams probably appreciate your working to create a more efficient pipeline, not just a more secure one, and make sure that all of these teams are working together to make security a reality, because you're right. I think developers now can take more responsibility of that security as long as they have the actionable fixes in hand to make sure that they can find these vulnerabilities quickly fix them quickly and get that out of the way so they can get back to their day jobs. Instead of the traditional disruptive security testing gates that they were used to before with not a lot of information to help them fix so that they have to rework their code months later. Nobody wants to do that. But I think no. that's a perfect segue, perfect segue into the next piece of the presentation. I just wanna make sure that everybody here, if you're not familiar with Sneak, that you know a little bit about who we are. Sneak is a developer security platform as Leandro and Nicolas mentioned. We test for vulnerabilities in code, in open source dependencies, in the transitive dependencies of those dependencies, in your container images, and your infrastructure's code configurations, while also providing that context, that prioritization, that remediation that your customers need to accelerate their digital transformation, bring secure applications to market more quickly. We do so, kind of like we mentioned today, by making ourselves very extensible. Sneak has the type of platform that fits very neatly across any development life cycle because we integrate well with industry leading solutions from development all the way through production. As you can see on this graph here, we have integrations with really any source code editor. You can plug us directly in the, into the IDE. You can point us at a Git repo, whether that's Atlassian, GitHub or others. You can work us into your CI CD pipeline, into your container registry or we can sit on a Kubernetes cluster in production and monitor for zero day vulnerabilities. You'll see here in terms of the work that we've done with AWS in particular, Sneak integrates with multiple tools across AWS's code suite, including the first and only native security integration into AWS code pipeline, the continuous de development pipeline, <clears throat> as well as integrations into their container registry, Amazon ECR and their managed Kubernetes service, Amazon EKS. Not only that, but AWS today is a customer of Sneak's. Today, Sneak is the primary engine for open source vulnerability data powering AWS's security assessment service, Amazon Inspector. In one click, you can find all the vulnerabilities across your EC2 instances and your container stored 
in your uh, Elastic Container registries as well. And you'll find that several of those CVEs across that open source vulnerability data belong to Sneak and we can help you move that security process forward. We also aggregate security streams and security events across both audit and security events to send those to AWS Security Hub, AWS CloudTrail Link, and Amazon EventBridge so that your development and your security teams can take full advantage of all the data they need to continue to be efficient. In terms of how you could get started with Sneak, I think this is the most exciting part. You can see us on the marketplace, visit us on the marketplace. Not only can you purchase Sneak software on the AWS marketplace using your existing billing mechanisms with AWS to help you consolidate invoicing, accelerate time to value and purchasing solutions, and cut a lot of red tape, sometimes going from a few weeks to buy some software to just a couple of days, but you can enjoy Sneak for free. Look up Sneak in the AWS marketplace Try us out for free. You can authenticate with nothing more than just an email. Point us at a GitHub repo and get started today. If you have any questions, feel free to visit us at our website at sneak.io. And at least for me, that's it for today. I want to thank you again, Leandro, Nicolás, for joining us today. That was a fantastic presentation. And I want to thank AWS for sponsoring this webinar with us. At this point, Cody, I'll give it back to you. All right, David, thanks so much. And Nicolas Leandro, thanks so much for joining us as well. This was such a such a packed session. And um, I've also put a link to that sneak on the AWS marketplace within the chat. So feel free to grab that. And if you are viewing this on demand, it will be available in the handouts at that point in time. Um, so feel free to check there. Um, so I did just want to remind everyone that we are not going to be doing a formal Q&A session today, but feel free to send in any questions that you may have uh, up until the time that we close out, and we'll be sure to send those over to the team, and they can, they can get back to you after the fact. Um, and I would also like to remind everyone that this session was recorded. So following this, you will be receiving an email with the link to access the recording on demand, or you can also find it living on the DevOps website at devops.com slash webinars and be sure to look in the on-demand section where it will be waiting for you. The four winners of our $25 Amazon gift card drawing, they are Anik G or Anik G, Darlene L, Phil R, and Richie D. So to our four winners, congratulations. Keep an eye on your email inbox to claim your gift card. We'll reach out to you in the next 48 hours. If you do not happen to see that email, check your spam folder on the off case that it got filtered out. I'd like to thank AWS, Sneak, and Pomelo for sponsoring our program today. And to everyone here with us, thanks so much for joining us over these last 40 or so minutes. We really appreciate your time, and we do want to hear your thoughts. So either stick around until we close out or follow that link that I've just placed in the chat, because we would love to hear your feedback via our survey. Let us know what you thought about this program, or if you have suggestions for future programs, we would love to hear your thoughts. Either way, we do hope to see everyone at a future Tech Strong Learning experience. Have a great rest of your day. And David, Nicolas, Leandro, thank you all so much for joining us today.